I would be remiss if I didn't follow up the last video with a video that has more realistic calculations. For our 0.20 molar HA, we declared it was going to be in a 1 liter solution, and I was going to add sodium hydroxide in a way that the volume didn't change. And in the big picture, you could probably use solid sodium hydroxide or something like that. But in a titration, usually you're just adding some solution. So volume will change. That's a big difference. All right. So the example we calculated before assumed constant volume. And I chose a constant volume of one liter because that allowed me to do my stoichiometry with molarities. All right. So this was the math we had set up last time. 0.20 molar in one liter is 0.20 moles. And I'm adding 0.05 moles at a time. And we can just work our way down from there. All right. So big difference. We did stoichiometry with molarities because they're in the same solution and that volume's not changing. All right. That doesn't happen so much in the real world because when we add our base to the solution, the volume's going to change. So a more realistic scenario, ignoring the, the magnitude of these numbers, one liter of this, that gives us our 0.2 moles again. In fact, that gives us 0.2 M, and I rewrote that very subtly different 0.20 moles this time okay so this was our sheet last time this is the one i'm going to work off today you'll notice every single number is the same as it was except now instead of molarities i'm doing this with moles so i'm going to put this paper aside we've got um 0.20 molar hi one liter of it that's 0.20 moles and 500 milliliters 0.1 molar naoh that's 0.05 mole increments each time all right Aliquot, if you've never seen the word before, is just a fancy way of saying portion. And uh, while the volumes involved in this titration are pretty unrealistic, I set it up in such a way that our numbers match the previous video. Only now, something's changing. And that something is the volume each time we add our base. And I happen to have set these up in advance. We have this 0.10 molar NaOH. In the beginning, we didn't add any, so our total volume was 1. It was our one liter from that initial acid sample. And then for our first increment, our first aliquot, we added 0.5 liters, 500 milliliters of NaOH, corresponding 0.1 molar, so that's 0.05 moles of NaOH. But now we went from one liter to one liter plus 0.5, which is 1.5. So each addition of 0.05 moles of the sodium hydroxide, which is how we set it up last time, is adding 500 mils of solution. So we end up with a pretty unrealistic 5 liters in the end, but the numbers, again, work out pretty well for us. So how are things going to change? Well, it's a pretty quick observation of how things change. And I'm pulling up these sheets from last time. Last time, we were able to just take our uh, amount of our acid there, 0.20, and then do the negative log of that. Because it was in 1 liter, and our stoichiometry involved molarities or moles, their magnitude's the same, we just plug in this number, 0 0.20, negative log of 0 0.2, 0 0.15, negative log of 0 0.15, 0 0.10, negative log of 0 0.10. So what's going to change now, since our volume is not constant at one liter, when we do those pH calculations, we're going to have to take into consideration how the concentration's changing, the volume's changing. So our pH is still going to be the negative log of our concentration of H plus or H3O plus, but that concentration is going to be our moles, which are these numbers here, divided by our total volume, which I wrote over here. So we're using those highlighted numbers, over here that red one, and over here that red one. This 0.15 and the 1.50. So I'll sketch out the first one right here, and then we'll take a look at the rest of them probably with a pause to jump time. Our pH, and I'm just going to carry this equation down, is going to be the negative log moles of H3O plus over volume total. For this first one, then, that's a number we've seen before, the negative log of 0.20, in this case, over 1 liter, because that is our total volume at that point in time. And so we saw this number last time. It was exactly the same because we were in a 1 liter solution. So that ends up 0.699 again. All right. And then as we go down, what's going to change each time? In fact, I'll go back and write those logs in a second. For this one, we're going to have that 0.15, but the total volume is now 1.5. And then we're going to have the 0.1, but our total volume is now 2 liters. So moles and liters, moles and liters. We've got 0.05 over 
2.5 for our moles and our liters. And then we get down to here, and we've got 0.20 of the A minus in 3 liters. And that one actually doesn't matter. If you remember before, with a strong acid, you end up with a pH of 7. A neutral salt is formed when we do that reaction. So we're going to end up with a pH of 7 right there. And then down here, we're going to follow the same idea, which is um, we have excess base. So our pH calculation is going to be based on the hydroxide ion concentration and working backwards from there, which last time we did right there. And those numbers are going to change because instead of using 0.05 from our stoichiometry, we're going to use 0.05 over the total volume at that point in time. All right. So let's get these numbers set up a little bit. pH negative log of H3O plus down here in the basic region, the pH we're going to end up calculating as 14 plus the log of our moles of OH minus over the total volume at that point in time. All right, since we have excess strong base, that is going to determine our pH, and we can use the hydroxide ion concentration at that point in time. So for this one right here, that'd be 14 plus the log of, we have 0.05 moles, and that is in, at that point in time, 3.50 liters. All right, in this particular case, that ends up 12.155. I didn't really leave room, so I'll write it right there, 12.155 for our pH. And then we'll carry these calculations down again. I'll just move this over. We've got 0 0.10 and 4. And then in the next one there, we have our 0 0.15 and then our 0 0.2. 0 0.15 moles, 0 0.2 moles. And that's going to be over our 4.5 and our 5 liters. Again, why do we have to do this? We didn't have to do it before. And the short answer is because volume changed. Over here, we just had one volume, and we can just plug in those mole amounts. Over here, when we add our base, our volume's increasing, so we need to take that into consideration. I'm going to pause it and fill in the missing stuff here, and uh, then we'll take a look at it. I've got the missing work filled in right here for our pHs and our POHs, and now we get the actual values. So this one, the first one ended up being 0.699, which was a repeat of the pH we had seen previously. In fact, I can probably sneak those in over here. All right, as we look at this one, the 0.15 over 1.5, our volume has changed and it's gone up by 50%, so our pH is going to have to go up as well. It's, it's diluted, it's less acidic. And we end up, in this case, with a 1.000 for our pH. So you'll notice less acidic because more dilute. That's not a 1 anymore. Down here, we have 1.301. You'll notice some number similarity there. 1.699. We still have our 7 right there because a strong acid and a strong base are giving us a neutral solution. Instead of... 14 plus log of 0.05, we did 14 plus log of 0.05 over 3.5. Similarly, not 0 0.1, 0 0.1 over 4, 0 0.15, 0 0.15 over 4, 0 0.20, 0 0.20 over 5, yeah? So I'm going to set that aside so that this number is still here. And in our basic solutions, we end up with 12.398. 12.523 and 12.602. And glancing at those other pHs from the previous calculations, 12.699 went down to a 12.1, less basic as it's more dilute. 12.13 went down to 12.3, 13.1, 12.5, and 13.3, 12.6. So again, as the volume goes up, the solution is more dilute, concentration of hydroxide decreases, and so the pH goes down. Or, as the solution becomes more dilute, concentration of the hydrogen ion decreases, and the pH goes up. So that's what we saw in those differences. So it's a bunch of words to say, 
before, we could just treat those as molarities and calculate pH accordingly. Now, we have to consider the volume changes, and our calculations now include volume.